Hey, this is Jared Cochran with Family Church. Welcome to our podcast. I'm excited that you're here. I hope that God moves through this message to reach you so he can move through your life. Be sure to share and subscribe so that we can reach the world with God's word. Enjoy the message. Welcome to the family room. Welcome back to the family room. We are excited to join you. We've got Kelsey on the couch and... My dad, <laughs> hey. wearing, the, wearing the Father's Day shirt <laughs> today. pale stand-in. <laughs> got my Father's Day shirt on. You got to flash watching. that shirt. As soon as they get the graphics off the yeah, screen, it'll, it'll be worth shirt. it. <laughs> Kelsey, let us know where you're watching from while we get going. Uh, hopefully it sounds much better than it has been sounding. I don't know if, <laughs> if you've watched our live stream uh, since the sound upgrades that we mentioned Last week, but uh, already a huge difference. I'm super yes. excited Sunday about that. Sunday was noticeable when we sang. I went home and watched it on live stream. Mm-hmm. Typically, when we go home on Sunday afternoon, I'll look at live stream and grimace <laughs> for an hour. But it was really fantastic. The sound was good. The levels were great. The harmonies were good. Well done. Good thing. And it was thank good. you to everybody who gives to make all that happen. So it was yes. really good. And uh, it actually should. I mean, they can't really tell much from today. But Sunday should be even better than last week because oh, we, made, we made some... Uh, Today and yesterday, I made some extra little tweaks um, with uh, Matt Fantastic. from uh, Church Front on it. So it'll, it'll keep getting better, nowhere to go but up. But uh, yeah, Family Room Wednesday, let us know where you're watching from. Let's hit the announcements really quick. Uh, the Art of Marriage is this week, um, Friday and Saturday. That's June 28th and the 29th at, what is it, 5.30 p.m. and mm-hmm. 10.30? 10.30 on Saturday. 10.30 on Saturday. Don't miss that. If Don't you have not registered, it. you can. You can still. Uh, it'll be right here in the sanctuary, and then we're doing breakout sessions. So you don't want to miss that if you've never done that. It's a good investment in your marriage. Friday night, it's 5 to 7, 5.30 to 7.30. Uh, Art of Marriage, Rick and Robbie do a great job with that. Kathy and I have done it several times, and I think she's learning some things. <laughs> One of these days, we'll get it right. Uh, oh, man. Is she here? No. Oh, no. That's good. She just comes running out. Uh, July 4th is the next... Wow. July. Oh, that's going to be a busy one. July 4th, 5.30 to 6.30 p.m., the next uh, Dining with Dignity downtown. They're doing that differently. So if if anybody is watching that is involved in Dining with Dignity, get with Jim and Kathy Lubinsky. Yeah. Don't just go down there. Get with them first because the traffic on July 4th would be atrocious. So they're going to be doing something a bit different. They've said how they're going to do it. So you want to talk with them before you go down to the food lot. You don't want to do that. Uh, The next food truck is July 7th. I've seen if we had it on the website which one it was. I know no. which one it is. Do you? Yes, I do. Oh, wait, Casey's Hot Dogs. It's the hot dog right? truck. Yeah, it's I July 7th, right after the July 4th celebration. That's perfect. So don't eat too many hot dogs on the 4th because Casey's Hot Dogs on are July amazing. 7th I can are eat those. phenomenal. And I think the Popsicle truck's going to be here, too. Oh, that was good. Actually, I didn't get one, but I heard it was great. They were fantastic. I heard it was great, so I need to try it. I got um, a sugar-free option. Yeah. No, I did. Oh, there's a, there's yeah, a, okay. have a sugar-free I, thought, I was like, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm sure there's a sugar-free hot or popsicle. Sugar-free hot dog. <laughs> Come up with those. Um, the next Dining with Dignity after that is August 1st, but then there's a Parents' Night Out. That's for um, August 10th. I'm pretty sure that is the, uh, the last-minute thing to go and get your shopping for school or, you know, whatever, what have you. That's our blessing to get them uh, back to school. The next Youth Night is August 13th. Tell us about that stuff. Uh, yeah, so yesterday, um, the 25th, was the first uh, summer youth event. We did a, a water day. Uh, that like was a, a blast. Time. That yeah. was uh, Duel's first thing. He did great, had a great little sermon on anxiety. We had hot dogs and you know drinks and, and chips and all that, and then they played um, the little kickball with the pools yeah. mm-hmm. um, and all that. The ball only went, I will be happy to report, the ball only made it into um, the retention pond close no to the That's brink That's a long off. way away. There were some heavy hitters <laughs> in that thing. <laughs> uh, it only made it in there one time, uh, and one boy braved. Uh, braved. Uh, he was pretty, Yeah, he was Boxers. like, is there an alligator here? And yes. I waited till he was about halfway in. Uh, and it wasn't like far in, but it was probably like 10 to 15 feet off shore. I see shore. Kelsey Cochran has joined us. So. And I waited till he was out there, and I said, well, it's, it's Florida, so there's an alligator in literally every body of water somewhere. <laughs> in Florida. Uh, mom's listening. Yep. Welcome. So look at that shirt, Kelsey. 
That's uh, it's a good shirt. Go. She got me this shirt. You gotta, it's good. Bring it up a little bit. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> it's really good. If she can't be on the couch, she might as well be on your chair. Proud to wear it. But uh, don't admit to driving while you're watching YouTube. So <laughs> tink, hopefully, tink. by faith, you are listening. So the, the youth program now is going in a new direction. Dual Landis is taking the helm of that. You guys He's are taking all... it. I believe it is in great hands. Oh, I'm sorry. July 23rd. I, I said it was August something. That's the next one, which is a Nerf gun war. It's going to be a blast. Uh, here in the, in the building. We'll, we'll what, figure wait, that out. What? Yeah. There's uh, oh, some fun stuff involved. I'm but nervous, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. We will provide... Um, the, the Nerf guns. First aid kits. And the uh, goggles for mm -hmm. them because oh, cool. the, you, I've been hit in the eye with one of those. And, it's and not reiterating fun. who the youth are. What is that? What is the age levels? The is youth, it age levels or grade levels or how does that um, I want to say 13 to 18, but it might be it might be sixth grade to uh, 12th grade. I don't know, but okay. I'm Kelsey sure will Kelsey will us. chime in and then we'll, we'll do that. Yeah. Yeah, I messed it up. It, it, on the website, it was uh, in August. But yes, the next one is July 23rd, 6 to 8 p.m. The Nerf Gun, again, Dual Landis is, is heading that up now. Um, we will be going, I know we've already gotten asked, we will be going back to weekly services yep. in August. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about him. He was, he's a great dude, great, great message. Super high, great vibes. I mean, it's it's. He's in, in good the hands. same college you are. Yeah, he's starting. Uh, he's starting classes in SEU. He might have already. I yeah, have he, I think him. he already has. He's already started. I think it was starting soon. I started my. So new it's an ones exciting today. time. It's got to be an exciting time for our church. It's an exciting time for you. It's a, it should be an exciting time for all of us because you're developing a, a new team, new leaders, new everything. Uh, it's very exciting. And and what we with the men's group when we met the other night. By the way, Beast Feast was. It was great. Off the chain. So much good food. Everything was good. The food was good. The fellowship was great. Uh, but the atmosphere was even better. We're working hard, and, and maybe we can take a few moments on this, to mesh together the generations so that you understand this. We were talking about this today. How important it is for the younger generation to, to be there because of their strength and, and the energy that they have, and the older generation to be there because of the wisdom that they have to, to give and to impart. And when you can push, pull those things together and get the young and the old working together, nobody's left behind, everybody's important, everybody's involved, but if you don't have young people, you don't have a future. Exactly. It, yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna say that the uh, the older generation. Uh, it, we need, need to realize wisdom. it's yeah. not like the younger generation is pushing them out. Right. I we mean, need your wisdom. We have to have, and I believe, um, like I mentioned, uh, you know, and we'll get into it on the age and anointing thing. Both sides have wisdom to offer. Everybody's mm -hmm. got their own uh, life experiences and, and you know, and stories that they're living out and have gone through. I, I do believe, obviously, the younger generation can learn from the older generation, yes. but the older generation can still learn some things from this yes, younger generation absolutely. growing up. And my thing is, in no way, shape, or form is the younger generation or my, you know, us trying to kick any of the older people out or saying that they're obsolete. Uh, if that's how you feel, the devil is a liar. Obviously, we still need the yes, gray hairs absolutely. in the building. But like you just said, I mean, if you don't have a younger generation that's coming it. up, uh, just to be completely blunt, when the older generation dies, if there's no That's generation it. to replace them, your church dies. You've and got to have full I nurseries. Want nothing with You've that. got to have full nurseries, four children's departments. You've got to be doing more weddings than funerals. If you're doing more funerals than weddings, your church is heading in the wrong direction. Yeah. We've got to trend in a different direction. And the, everybody that I'm talking to is excited about it. I know that there are some that might not get that same message. But everybody that I'm talking to is excited about it, excited about us, excited about you guys and your leadership. I'm excited that I see you guys developing younger, stronger leaders. And, I, and I'm so excited because that sets our future in motion right now. We're able to see it all happen. So I'm it's, very it's excited. an exciting time. Flash, we will be, uh, for those of you on Facebook that can't see, Flash uh, is prayers for his family member who's heading into surgery for a removal of a four centimeter mass. Pray. So uh, we will be praying for you. Ashley, uh, I, we haven't set the next date, have we? Uh, Kelsey, chime in. She gave us a date. I haven't uh, confirmed that, yeah, but I don't I, remember it was sometime what it is. in August or September. I, th it's, I think August. August. Kelsey will let us know. She'll we, let us we, know in a minute. You know, here, y'all are discovering this. We all do what Kelsey says. So we're, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're trying to. Oh, we're meeting on, oh, that, we're meeting on, on, Tuesday. on that on Tuesday. Then is when Kelsey will tell us what we're going to be doing. <laughs> So. <laughs> Perfect. So she's today, the keeper of the calendar. So the we keeper keep, of the. She's very organized. Like I mentioned, Sunday with the Waze 
thing. Uh, <laughs> she's she's incredibly organized. But we, I wanna, I wanna get, get into this. I, uh, get to it. I left my iPad in the office, so I gotta do it from my phone. You want me but, to keep uh, talking? I'll, I'll no, call I've got it right here. here. Worst case, I can pull up on my computer. Uh, Sunday, where I've been is not where I'm going, and I preached from Hebrews eleven. 8 to 16, and Gen- Oop, Genesis 12, 1 to 4. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you had a favorite um, quote or you know anything stood out to you, obviously drop that in the comments. We'd love to hear it. But uh, yeah, the whole, the whole thing, um, and I, I think I was, I was talking to Kelsey's mom, uh, I think it was after church on Sunday, and this message actually, um, I'm going to get super cliche language, it was birthed in me. Uh, before we, <laughs> it was ruminating in, in my bones. Uh, actually, before we got, we went to uh, North Carolina a few weeks ago. And then um, that week, uh, I stayed up with my like daily devotional, but I didn't want to put, you know, I was trying to use that as like a relaxation and rest kind of right. period to focus on the kids and everything. But yeah, it was just, it was stirring up in me. And like I said, I was, it, it was like a, a rally cry to reawaken yeah. people's faith, to, to realize that God is taking us somewhere or, you know, you, if you're watching from wherever and you're not really a part of this church or, or whatever, but God is taking everyone somewhere. Um, somebody said that in the men's group that God is preparing, I can't remember exactly how he worded it, but God is preparing something, and yeah. you know he's he's in pushing the people to online fam group. David Himes, yeah, he said that uh, all this distraction that's going on right now with with ministers and scandals, it's once again another distraction to keep us from focusing on the fact that God is doing a major shift in in the church and in the world, but in the world of the church, uh, leaders are shifting, leaders are changing, younger leaders are stepping in and, and becoming more active. Um, and so there's there's a shift taking place right now, and we're we're involved in it. Uh, I, I I said it Sunday afterwards that I at, I felt personally attacked. By the way, <laughs> I felt personally attacked by this message. Uh, it was uh, a lot of it. I'm sure was meant for me um, because you were talking about faith and walking on faith and stepping out on faith. And God doing that and, and all of that and getting comfortable, and you're going to talk about all that, the chair on the stage and all that kind of stuff. A lot of it, I don't know if you intended it for it to be that way, but I, I heard loud and clear. What, and Kathy and I, your mom and I, talked about this at length uh, for hours afterwards about it. That, um, you know, and, I, and I've admitted it to our congregation, I admit it to a family room. I got very, very comfortable um, when our church reached the level where it has, where it has been now for years. Uh, we've reached a full building. Uh, our bills are paid. Um, we're very, very well able to do anything that we want to do um, in the community. We, all of our ministries are well funded. Thank God for our givers. But I got really super comfortable with, man, this is really nice. And so now we're talking about, you know, this purchase of land, the relocation of the church, building a big building to do the work and expand the work and, and schools and all that kind of stuff. And it's a challenge for us to, it's a challenge for me uh, to say, I'm going to step back out of that comfort zone and get back on the front line of it all. But it was a great message for that. So if anybody, I don't know why I'm rambling, but if any of you are watching and God is challenging you in areas of getting out of your comfort zone, go find this message and take a listen and see what God says to you about it. Because I, I find that a lot of times when we get comfortable, it's very hard for us to get out of that. It's very, we get defensive, we get protective. We like it there, and it's hard for us to shake that off and say, there's still work to do. That is, so. um, like, like I said, with, with the thing with the, uh, the tamarisk tree, was uh, Genesis, the end of Genesis 21, just after the birth of Isaac, when he, he planted the tree, and then he just kind of sat down and stopped doing anything. He kind of quit moving forward um, in the promise, you know, like God told him to do. And keep going forward, and he stayed in the land of the Philistines for a long time, is is what it says uh, in the NIV, and uh, and then in twenty two, um, that's when God calls him to uh, sacrifice Isaac, and as we know, like that, mm-hmm. that doesn't pan out in the way that we would have thought or how he would have. You thought. made a comment about that. It wasn't about testing his faith. It was, it was about, about reawakening, reawakening, getting out of getting him out of his apathy. Um, mm-hmm. I think was one of the things that I, I ended up cutting out. I cut a lot uh, out of this message. Um, as, <laughs> so here's, here's for the family room. I told a few people I was talking with after church. There's a, when I preach, there's an hour timer on the TV back there. And at one point I looked up and there was 18 minutes left 
And I was going through and uh, I scrolled through my notes and there's the little slider on the side, you know, that you can see how far down you are. There's 18 minutes left and I was halfway through my notes. So scroll, scroll, uh, fun scroll, fact, scroll. If, yeah, well, yeah, if you go and you watch the sermon or if you remember live, there's a, a part uh, near the end where I just went like this. And if you see my hand doing that, I didn't lose my place. That was uh, an on the fly hey, cutting I- a whole lot of stuff out. And um but it was a, it was a lot of fun. I ended up Kelsey was she was asking for my notes Tuesday for something too, mm-hmm. and uh, there's a thought. I don't know what she was looking for, but she apparently she couldn't find it because I uh, I um, ended up ad libbing it. It was the blinders, the horse thing at the end. The, if you're not if you're not involved in Kelsey's online fam group, Kelsey, if you would drop a link to how they can do that, and then uh, the men's the fam the young group, adult if you wouldn't group. mind the online groups because that's a, a great place for you to get some ongoing. I was talking to Calvin a few minutes ago in the gym. <laughs> And he said, from where he and his wife sit, the reflection apparently on the drum cage shows the clock on the back wall. Does so it? He says, I can sit there and I can look at the clock. <laughs> and he said, I saw it went over an hour. <laughs> it was like, hello. Yeah. No, it was, I, I, had a, I had a little mini panic attack when I saw that. Um, but I was like, well, we're going to get we're going to get somewhere. So being the chair was, was a great more. analogy. It was a great analogy. I was like, where did you get that? I always like props and something like that. Not, I don't like it to go overboard, but something like that that's simple and all can get right to the point. So the point of your message was um, walking by faith, trusting God no matter the season. Uh, where I, what was the title again? Where I have where been I, is where not, I've been is not where I'm going. Got to believe that there is more for you in your life. How many people live their lives giving up and feeling stuck where they are? Oh, exactly. Like that. Like um, you know, like you said with with the church. You know, we yeah. got here and then. You know, you get to the point you where said, everything's kind of We've been here easy. for 19 years. 20. 20 years. This is the longest we've ever been in a location. Yeah. So, you know, that, that stirred me up. I was like, yeah, the first location was three years. The second location was 16 years. And this one has been 20. 20 years. It's time to move again, y'all. That's a long time. That's what, that's what was funny, too, about the chair. These the chairs. chair illustration was, <laughs> these chairs are 20 years old. And Some we just, you know, I mean, it's nice. You don't have to think about it. You just come in, you sit down. But uh, that was the whole point of the analogy. Like, you know, when, when God says, hey, I want you to do this, uh, I want you to buy 60 acres of land, and there's going to be some little hiccups with <laughs> some EPA tanks. But, you know, and then we're like, oh, well, God, are you sure? Well, maybe I didn't hear this right, or maybe this was incorrect, or, you know, we, and we throw all these questions, but it's like yeah. when it comes to, you well, want to twist it a different way, when it comes to stuff that we have created, mm-hmm. We trust in it completely. We don't create the promise. We, we create, create the problems. problem. Exactly. That was a quote that I wanted to hear. Because we try to get out ahead of God, and we try to, try to God tells us, you know, I'm, I'm going to move you here, but he doesn't tell us how he's going to get us there, and, we're, you know, you got to walk it out by faith was one of the highlights, and, you know, we end up, it takes longer than we think, or, you know, there's a couple more obstacles, something that comes up that tests our faith. Like Abraham, you know, we kind of, he, you know, God gave him all these promises, the land and, and a great nation and a blessing to the world. And he finally gets his son after 100 years, or well, I guess after 25 years of being promised, but 100 years if you think about it. Yep. Um, and, you know, as soon as he has his son, he just kind of sits down. He's like, okay, well, this is good enough. And we, we settle for good enough mm-hmm. instead of what God truly intends for us. And, you know, I mean, imagine how, had he just from that point, just sat down and been like, well, I've got Isaac, so, mm-hmm. you know, I don't need anything else now. I, I don't need to continue on. And then where, where would we be now? No is always easier than yes. Uh, uh, can you help me out? No. Uh, you got a couple minutes? No. Uh, because when you say yes, then there comes sacrifice. And so I, I learned this years ago. No is always easier than yes. But no is the end. No is where things go to die. And when and there's a place for no. But yes has life to it. Yes brings about change and the next and all of that goes along with it. So, but when you say yes, obstacles, there's opportunity, but there's also obstacles. But remember this, the pain of faith never outweighs the promise of God. The pain of faith never outweighs. And that was, um, I think I I, I said, there was something I got from from a a book that I had read. And that was... um, Kind Thank of you, a little bit twist on that. But, yeah, I mean, we always, yeah, we, we see, okay, 
case in point, Abraham. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the nation. I'm going to give you uh, a family. I'll give you, I'll give you land. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be blessed when we got there. That's why I opened up with the analogy or with the story of, you know, like if you were living somewhere and you had it all together like this, but then someone comes up, God, mm -hmm. and says, you know, hey, I've, I've got this plot of land. Uh, you just go over there. Once you get there, you're going to get 10 million, 100 million dollars, because obviously Abraham ended up being extremely wealthy. And not that that's always the case. I'm not going to sit here and have the internet say that I'm preaching the prosperity gospel, even though half the time when people say that, it is God's it's will not even the prosperity gospel. It's uh, God's will. But yeah, it was, it was God's will to bless him, and it's God's will to bless you. I think a lot of people, they just get the mistake that bless, bless you and blessing means material things and stuff. It, it could mean joy, happiness, peace. It could mean yeah. a whole number of things. Actually, I'm pretty sure but the blessing in the, the Bible, does make a man blessing rich. in the Old Testament meant happiness or something like that. It's, yeah. I don't remember. It's something in school. But so he promises that, and we're like, okay, yeah, that sounds great. And we'll, you know, we'll all want to go straight in on that. And then none of us realize, you know, the pain that comes in that process. Mm -hmm. Like Abraham, he's going to be cut off from everything he knows. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's got to, I mean, imagine like that. So uh, when, when God calls on him to sacrifice Isaac, to test his faith, to reawaken his faith, and he just goes and does it. I, I, I'm sure in his head, he's still like, okay, yeah, he's 100% sure God's going to provide it. Amen. And, but there's still that thought in the back of your head yes. like oh okay well because he thought you know well god's either going to provide a ram or he had the faith that god would raise him from the dead mm -hmm. and obviously one of those is a much more <laughs> desirable outcome mm -hmm. but yeah i mean obviously god could and would raise isaac from the dead if that was his will but you imagine like what if that had been the route instead of mm -hmm. providing the ram and then God was like, okay, like, and then you had to do that. And obviously that's a painful process. Yes. And then you're trusting. So it's like you, there's just that pain involved. There's always pain. Of, you know, something, it's like uh, the, the vine and the branches to pr produce good fruit and to keep growing. You have to prune the vine. You have to prune yes. the trees mm -hmm. so that you can keep producing good fruit. You know, I think of like the promise and the, the vision and stuff that I have for this church. And it's like, okay, I know... I have an idea of, you know, how it's going to look or what it's going to be or what it will grow to. But then it's like you still have the, for me, being incredibly um, impatient, you have the pain of having to wait and trust yeah. God. And then, you know, you, you don't see something happening as fast as you want it. So you're like, well, okay, is this really, mm -hmm. you know, is this really how it's going to happen or how is this going to happen? You know, do I need to go do this to try to speed it up? That was the whole thing of, you know, trying yeah. to get ahead of God or, you, get, hey, you know. Ishmael. Like that, like, I want you to leave line work and start preaching. It's like, well, I hate talking to people, for one, and I definitely don't want to talk to a bunch of people, for two. <laughs> but now you've got the pain of the process of figuring out how to do that, how to study it, how in to write it time. out, how to stand in front of people critics. and say it. and Yeah, critics. All the time. Galore. Uh, wow. And it's just, that it's such a painful process. But the important thing is the promise that comes from that yeah. and the growth that you get from that and the just the maturity and the blessing that comes from walking that out I is can help you with so that. much better. Um, your mom and I talked about this the other day. This is our third location where we are. The purchase of the land will provide us with our fourth location. Every step of the way has always uh, started with a, a bit of, of a panic, like, oh, my God, this is crazy. Uh, but you go after it, and then God proves himself faithful. And then when we went to Kings Estate Road, God proved himself faithful. We were able to get the land, build the building, da, 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 debt free in nine years. To come here, this, this piece of property we should have never gotten. We should never be in this location, but God just simply gave it to us. He's, and so we were talking about it. If you're thinking about taking a step of faith, God has always proven himself to be faithful. Uh, I, and, and I don't know why it is that we forget that. Sometimes we just convince ourselves that, oh, well, this time it's too big, or this time it's too much. And you, and you forget that he is, the, he is God Almighty. And so then he steps in and proves himself to be faithful. That was like this. We were talking about this last week. Um, again, we say it all the time, thank you to our givers. But as we go into the summer, sometimes giving dips a little bit, and it had dropped to a, a certain particular level. And then last week, somebody came along and just blessed us with something that was very, a, a blessing to our church uh, for the future. 
and it reminds you to say, you know, God, thank you. Thank you so much for your, your faithfulness. God is able. Don't, don't hold back because you don't think that he can because he's just waiting for you. You said so much about faith and well, stepping that's out. Like, that's like trust. God, God picked, I think, God picked Abraham because it was, like I said, somebody that would trust him, somebody that would trust him fully. And like that with just giving, because that was the last thing you said, but it's like giving, waiting on the economy to be good, to yes. give to God faithfully, that's not trust. Or waiting on the economy to be good, to step out and do something big. Yeah. That's not faith. No, that's, that's, that's not. challenging me because, you know, everybody says the, the economy right now is yeah. not good. And you're talking about buying 60 acres of land. That's just not But smart. that's how God works. He doesn't want, like I said, the, right? your greatest opportunities don't come when the money's all in the bank, right. when you're well rested, you give him glory. when you're all ready to do it. It's going to come when it literally makes no sense. The mm -hmm. only way it yep. does make sense is because God's hand is in it. And that's and he why can, he challenges you. He can move in your maybe. He can move in your maybe. Did you like that one? I that like that one. one. I wrote that down. God can move in your maybe. It may maybe. be different, it but he will move in your working maybe. Working it out for you. Yeah, that Somebody was write too. that down. I, uh, that made my, what do you all say? That made my baby jump when that came. Come on. I, was, I can't remember where I was typing You should have said, I'm going to preach before I get out of here. No, I, I don't have a catchphrase, catchphrase yet. <laughs> I don't. But Somebody when that, that was, I know that, that, that maybe thing was 100% the Holy Spirit. I was sitting there writing it out. And it popped up, and I stopped, and I like leaned back, and I was like, "That's good. That is good." Thank I, you, I, I literally, I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> you're showing off." Your other best <laughs> point was global positioning or God positioning. Global positioning. I'd never thought about this. It was so good. You can look to the world to see where to go or who to be, or you can look to your God positioning system and go one step at a time. God will always tell you to go. That's the only direction you get. You GPS. don't get the. You don't go. get the the destination. You don't get all the details. You just get the green light. Mm -hmm. Go. That's his final, his last words. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Daydreaming about yesterday is staying stuck. Did I say daydreaming? I don't understand daydreaming, but I do or remember. No, you yes. said dreaming. I'm sorry, dreaming about yes, yesterday. God, God doesn't want you stuck in yesterday. I mean, we think a lot Glory of us, uh, and, and I, I hate to sound like I'm always harping on the older generation, but it is just such a, a, a thing with oh, the older it. generation where it's, oh, you know, it, it used to be this way. Azusa the, Street. The town used to look like this. Music used to sound like this. You know, oh, it. they used to preach like this. Why can't we just do... And it's like, not that there's anything wrong with it, but that mindset is really you just saying, why can't it be the way that I want it to be? Mm -hmm. And you need to step back and realize things happen in the way that God wants them to happen. And God is, like we talked about earlier, he's doing a new thing. He's got to raise new people up to continue to spread the gospel. It, I mean, if, if God is only using the 80-year-olds and then they all die out, well, then what happens? What do do? Nobody in the world gets to know Jesus because no one else was you know, raised up to do anything That's about it. That's what's different about our church. We love children. We love noisy kids. We love rooms full of kids and papers on the floor and scratches on the wall because that tells you that you've got a future. Your kids are running around having a good time. Exactly. You can't get stuck in yesterday's provision that you'd never move into tomorrow's promise. That's You're not buried. You've you been just planted. planted. That was good. That's one of my favorites. I wrote that down too. Not buried. Just, yeah. I mean, we get in the dark places and we don't, you know, we don't think about how that's something to make us grow. How, you know, it's not just buried under the pressure. It's just you're, you're, you're planted and it's good soil. I think that's important. To, one of the most important things that you said, and that's the overall thing that I walked out of it with, is that, and let's get ready for the chair analogy, but the safe <laughs> of it all. Um, we, we love being safe. We love the feeling of feeling safe. We have locks on our doors, alarms on our houses, safety bags in our cars, airbags in our cars. We like the feeling of feeling safe, but sometimes when you're walking by faith, I mean, we should. That's the time that we should feel the safest but sometimes our flesh convinces us that it's, it's not the safest place. But you're absolutely right. The safest place that you could be is walking by faith and trusting Him. Yeah, we end up, well, I, I said it. it just, I just got it a different way now that I'm thinking about it. But I said it as, you know, we, we believe in saving faith, but we settle for safe faith. Yeah. But like you said, and, and, I, and I had said something, you know, we, we walk by faith, not by sight. But for most people, instead of walking by faith, we walk by safe Mm -hmm. I should have. I wish I'd have had that for Sunday. You but. got that in the family room. That's for y'all tonight. <laughs> we walk by safe instead of walking we walk by, by safe faith, and not by sight. And we don't realize 
I think of like the Israelites coming out of Exodus, coming out of Egypt in Exodus. And it's like you, you just spent 400 years in, in oppression and slavery Beat to down. and beaten down. And God moves you out of this. And it was such a terrible situation, but you grew mm-hmm. comfortable in it because mm-hmm. that's all you ever that's what knew. You knew. And since that was comfortable to you, you consider that safer yeah. than following God. And then it's like you read the story and, you know, I, not to make light of it, but it's like you, want, you, you step back and you're like, are you serious? Are you serious? <laughs> Like, you literally have, God did all of these visible signs and miracles directly in front of you, and then you're literally following him by a cloud during the day and a pillar of fire by night. You walked through walls of water Mm -hmm. to escape your enemies. Let's go And then as soon as they get away, they're just like... Oh man, we should have gone back. Why did we ever leave Egypt? Like, there were are you cucumbers serious? Back where we came from. But I mean, uh, how often do we still do that do. today? When God pulls us, uh, pulls us out of something, and God, God pulls you out of addiction, and then suddenly you have no more. You you think you have no more friends because now you're disconnected from this whole group that actually brought no life to you, Nothing brought no growth to you. It just literally was leading you to your death. But because that's all you knew, suddenly you consider that a loss because you've lost all your friends. But it's like you don't realize God cut that dead weight off of you. Yep. And like, so you can run. So you can run. So you can take off the weight and run the race. But it's like you need to, you know, and it's not that you can't save them. You know, obviously Jesus saves them. But it's like you realize like you could be a testimony yeah. to them. But instead, you know, you're, you're stuck dreaming of yesterday like the Israelites did with Egypt and thinking like, oh, well, this was a better situation. Like, no, this, this was a terrible situation. Mm-hmm. It's just you always, you know, we always think of uh, like the glory days or something when you leave a job and you start something new. And then when you start looking back on it, you're like, man, that was so much fun. But you always forget the times that you were working until three in the morning, you know, mm-hmm. and sweating in the middle of the night and... Right. and Working your butt off and dying, and you know, eating That's why I sent you all that cold picture. leftovers. I sent you a picture of you, yeah, one time when you were on a job site, and you were like, <laughs> It was long days, but I mean, it was, I do that, and I still do it all the time. I'm not, you know, trying to be hypocritical, but it's, you know, I'll look at stuff, I'm like, Oh, that was fun, and then immediately I'm like, No, all the other stuff was terrible, not fun at all. <laughs> like, yeah, there's some cool, there's some fun stuff that you could do, and all that, but it's like for the majority of it, like. Mm-hmm. There's so much just misery within that. But we always, when we look back, we always turn the story and make it sound better than what it yeah. truly was. So let's try to stir people, and we're trying to do that here, um, to stir you guys to, to living by faith and walking by faith. I think a valid comment was made. I don't know who made it, but it's, it's true. that in, Maybe you did. In the American church, we literally have no real need of faith to I walk by so. faith because we've got everything. Yeah, we're comfortable. We've got nice homes, cars, food, water. Everything we need is at our hand. If we don't have what we need, somebody will give it to us. There's very little need for us to walk by faith, so we do get lazy. Yeah, we have a very lazy faith. And then as soon as you ask people to do anything, to serve in the church, to give more to the church so you can do more as a church, not that you're just trying to line the pastor or the staff's pockets, but you're trying to literally reach the lost, feed the homeless, clothe the needy, uh, but it's like we're so just used to just coming in a building and, oh, there's lights and, you know, or, or there's a smoke machine and it sounds good and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, that's funny you bring it up. I just saw a reel right before coming here um, about how people in other countries, there's Christians trying to meet up with other Christians in countries where it's literally illegal to be a Christian and they could be killed but in America, we are debating on if watching live stream is good enough for attending church. Right. Not that obviously there's nothing wrong with live stream or anything right. like that. And you if know, you're at if a distance, you that's great. if you're at a distance or you know maybe there's no church that's kind of around you that you have connected with, and if, and if this is your home church and you're in a different state, that's awesome. We're we're glad to have you as part of our family. Matthew Burry. But it's like just like that. I mean, we we, we settle for the most basic, tiny little thing that we can do, and we call it, you know, oh, that's faith. And Mark like, Driscoll did a reel on that. I don't know if you saw it the other day where he was talking about people that, and I've heard it my whole life, oh, I feel closer to God out running on the beach than I ever did in church. Well, Mark, you said there's two kinds of people, that people are running to something or people that are running from something. Yeah. 
The Word of God says that the church is still valid. Hebrews 10.25, do not forsake the assembling of yourself together. You need the community. Yes, it's a bunch of imperfect people, and yes, the church can be a mess and all that goes along with that. Nobody's debating that. But you need the community. You need that community of faith so when one falls, the other one can lift them back up again. Yeah. That, it's, it's never going to go away. So <laughs> I mean, think about that. So uh, think about, we'll just go all the way back to the beginning. In the Garden of Eden, the serpent tempts Eve while she's alone Yeah, and causes her to stumble. That's when it happens. Typically, so, if you watch it, when people fall into addiction, pornography, gambling, whatever, it happens when you are able to get alone. Yeah, when you're alone and you're not connected with anyone. That's why it's so important to connect with a church, to connect with other believers. That's why I love how we're getting uh, more of the fam group stuff started up, yeah. just to have community and, and fellowship. That's such an important aspect. The men's group, just... the ladies group, and coming soon, I see Bean is out there. Bean coming soon as a grief support group that's going to be done on Zoom. Uh, and I think Kelsey already started a, a small uh Fam group for that as well, didn't you? Uh, I think so, yeah. yes. So if you're open to grief share and you would look, there's links that have been put on there by Kelsey. If you're interested in the grief share group or a men's group or a ladies group, just click on those links and go join those. We'll put you in and get you connected. Um, Jennifer S., is that Facebook on this side? It says, I'm YouTube terrified. YouTube on the left. I don't, YouTube. I don't know what you're terrified about, but know that we are praying for you. We'll continue to pray for you. Uh, that God will take care of you and get you through it. Because faith is, is sometimes, uh, you may have mentioned it, sometimes God will move in your maybe. Sometimes there's that element of, oh boy. Uh, uh, I've actually, in the, in the Crazy Faith book uh, by Mike Todd, um, I think that was like one of his first books or something he wrote, but he talks about that, how um, anything with God is already a majority. And he talks about having just enough faith and how God will even take your 51% faith and work with that, mm -hmm. even if it's just Absolutely. enough, just something there. And it's like, you know, we all have, you know, different levels of, of faith and belief that something can happen. But, you know, if you just trust God with, with your maybe, mm -hmm. maybe you will see it turn out way better than how you're thinking. I mean, we always get with any situation, we always come up with our own scenario of how it's going to turn out, how fast it's going to turn out, you know, when, when this is going to happen, when this is going to happen, you know, I'm going to go into this meeting today and, you know, the best outcome is for this to happen and this to happen and this to happen. And then it's like, if those don't line up with what you thought in your head, mm -hmm. you're immediately just depressed and disappointed. Right. And, you know, and it's like, you don't realize maybe God is doing something completely different that's going to be unimaginably Imaginable, that's not even a word, but whatever. Un Unimaginably better. better than what you had in your own head. And if you would just take that, and it's, it's obviously easier said than done, but if you just take that and you've just completely just handed over to God and you're like, look, I'm struggling with, and, and that's the thing too in our prayer life, there's so many people that are just afraid to just get real with God as if he doesn't know your own, your thoughts in your heart. God is not afraid of you bringing your doubts to him. That's a fact. It, it, in fact, he probably, obviously, not probably, he wants you to bring your doubts to him. He wants you to be completely open and raw with him. And if you're just like, look, God, I don't really know how this is going to happen. I don't know how this is going to change. I don't know how this is supposed to turn out for my good because right now everything looks absolutely terrible. Amen. And it's, it's a horrible looking situation. And I have no idea how this is going to happen. But I just trust you to do something. And I know that... I am called. I know that you are working it out for my good because I am a call. I am called according to your purpose that he will take what the enemy meant for evil and he will turn it for your good. And you just, you, it's, it's so cliche and I hate just saying, it, but it's like, you just have to trust God. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, oh, it's, that's just repetitive and, and redundant, but it's true. That's the Bible. You just have to trust Wait, God. It's you what repetitive and redundant and redundant. You mean things get repeated? Yeah. Flesh. Well, repetition is important. <laughs> Rep God loves repetition. I, I believe it. God loves so repetition. So even when you <laughs> can't see where your feet are, the foundation is firm. Exactly. You I don't have to. Uh, so we can end with that. So think about the psalm. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto mm -hmm. my path. The lamp in biblical times would only have been bright enough to literally just take the next step. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know what else to do, just get in God's word and realize 
that as you're moving down the path with him, as you're following him on the path that he has for you, his word is a lamp. That's why it's so important to get in the word daily and even just a chapter a day, just to ruminate on it. And if you don't know where to start, I mean, version has so many devotionals. I mean, that you can search anything and you're going to find something. But just getting in his word, start with the Psalms if you have nowhere else to start, or even just the Proverbs. But I mean, I love the Psalms. Um, David, you know, best rapper ever. But uh, yeah, you just, you just realize that you're not always going to see completely down the line. You're not going to see the destination all the time. You're just going to maybe, maybe see the next step. And sometimes you might not even see that because it's just so there's so much darkness around you. But realize that as long as you're following God, you can be sure of your footing. Mm -hmm. You can be sure of your footing. You don't have to see where you're stepping to realize that God has already ordered your steps. Now, obviously, that does not mean, you know, just run off and go do whatever. Yeah. Somebody will take that the wrong way. But following God is that just, you know, I don't, I don't know if this is the next step, but I feel like it is. You know, God's pulling me in this direction. I feel like God's pulling me to, in uh, this direction and just taking that next step and trusting him to meet you there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you think of the, the prodigal son, when he returned, he didn't even make it to the house, and the father came running. As long as you're walking in that direction and trying to get back to God, trying to get to God, he will meet you. Not even halfway, he will run the majority of the way to meet you there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's where I'm at, because you're at a place where you're just trusting God, and um, if you're just joining us, we talked about earlier about the purchase of the land. We're that close. We're finishing the final details of it now. Uh, but I have had several times in that process where it was just like it would have been easier to just say let's just play it safe and don't do that but you know if, if you're going to do big things and you're going to do stuff like that that gives god great glory those are the steps you take and well we think of any business google or apple the places start. that started in a garage yeah. and they just they moved on a maybe for a business yeah and we think wow that's awesome that would be so cool to you know just do that but it's like as soon as it comes mm -hmm. to god and faith we're like well i don't know yeah. We have to trust. Just and if your trust. heart is right, I mean, that's the, I keep reminding myself of that. If your heart is right and your motives are pure, God has a way of blessing that. It's childlike. Like if your children come to you and they want something and their heart is right and their motives are pure, you'll move heaven and earth to, to just do anything you can to help them do that. It's the same with our Heavenly Father, that if your heart is right and your motives are pure, and ours are. Kathy and I were talking about this yesterday. Uh, this church, the work that we do, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, putting... 35,000 pounds of groceries in trunks every Saturday. Uh, all that we do is for the community. And so if we get in a space like that where we're saying, you know what, let's expand that. Enlarge the place of our tent, lengthen our cords, strengthen our stakes, let's do it. Uh, let's just believe God together. So let's believe God together to make sure it happens and the provision is there uh, and God will supply the need to get it done. Perfect. With that. With that. I'm going to bring it to a close. This has been uh, another great Wednesday. A wonderful and, um, Wednesday. Coming up Sunday, don't know what it's going to be yet. <laughs> no, I meant like, you know, whatever. But, uh, yeah, always come early. Uh, we start at 10 a.m. If you're, if you're far away, you know, live stream now is uh, phenomenal. Not that it wasn't, but obviously the sound has made a massive improvement. Get ready for it to get better. And, uh, you know, make sure you just, just share. As soon as you start watching, just... Tell somebody about church. Exactly. Share. Invite like, somebody. obviously, you can invite someone to the building, but if you're just watching online at a distance, just hit share and share it on your yeah. timeline and get somebody to watch with you. That's it's always summertime. a great thing. summertime. Um, help us grow the church. Invite somebody. I mean, so, if you've noticed somebody missing, give them an invitation to come and be here with us. Summertime's always a little weird, uh, but... But it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. We always say summer slump. But we always say summer jump. We invite people. Our summers, we, we always say, I always say, at the beginning of summer, we're going to take it easy and slow down. And then this has, like, been the busiest summer. <laughs> Full tilt, baby. All the time. Taking the foot off the gas. Kick Gotta the tires going. and light the fires. There you go. Let's go. We're going to go. We'll see you on Sunday at 10 a.m. We love you guys. Have a great rest of the week. Hey, I hope that message spoke to you today. I want to say thank you to everybody who is involved at Family Church and those who help support this ministry. If you would like to get more involved, you can click the link in the description or head to our website, familychurch.social. We would love to connect with you, and you can find all of our social media platforms on our website. 
Also, if this message spoke to you in any way today and you liked it, consider sharing it on your social media in any way that you would like so that we can help reach those far from God and return them to the arms of the Father. We want to see God work through you. We love you. Thanks again for listening. God bless you.